a detailed explanation of legal news from the Hindu newspaper October 2022. The first article is about the Supreme Court Collegium. In India, the judicial appointments are made through a collegium system and this system was evolved through the judgments of the Supreme Court and not through any act of the parliament or any of the provisions of the constitution. The collegium system is a group which is headed by the Chief Justice of India and four other senior most judges of the Supreme Court. Various appointments to the Supreme Court and High Courts are made through this collegium system. We know the collegium system was evolved through various judgments of the Supreme Court. Hence we have to know before the collegium system what was prevailed in India for judicial appointments. The constitution of India was adopted in the year 1950. From 1950 up to 1973, the Chief Justice of India was appointed by the President and all the other judges of the Supreme Court was appointed by the President but only with the recommendation of the Chief Justice and other judges. This way of appointment of the Chief Justice and other judges of the Supreme Court are mentioned in our constitution. There was a convention which was followed where the senior most judge of the Supreme Court is appointed as the Chief Justice of India. But this was changed in 1973 where Anne Ray was appointed as the Chief Justice against the convention. Again in 1977, another Chief Justice was appointed who superseded his seniors and hence there arises a fight between the government or the executive and the judiciary. And therefore in 1982, a petition was filed in the Supreme Court and the case is known as S.P. Gupta case or the first judge's case. During the proceedings of this case, the Supreme Court made a serious discussion about whether the word consultation means concurrence, that is, whether the President is bound to make a decision based on the consultation with the Supreme Court. But the Supreme Court overruled this and said the President is not bound to make a decision based on consultation. Remember the ruling in the first judge's case gave the government primacy over the judiciary for judicial appointments for a period of 12 years that is up to 1993. In 1993 another petition was filed by the Supreme Court Advocates on Records Association and this case was known as the second judge's case. In this case the Supreme Court overruled its earlier decision in the first judge's case and said the word consultation means concurrence that is the president is bound to make decision only based on consultation with the Supreme Court or the Chief Justice of India. And the point to be noted is that this case that is the second judge's case paved the way for the birth of the collegium system in India. Hence, the collegium system started functioning with the Chief Justice of India and two other senior most judges of the Supreme Court. But a difference in opinion arised in 1998 with a special reference from the President to the Supreme Court with regard to the word consultation. Hence, the third judge's case arised and the ruling by the Supreme Court is that the collegium system must be a five-member body with the Chief Justice of India and four other senior most judges. Now what's happening in the collegium system is that in this system of appointment of judges, the collegium will recommend the names of the candidates to the central government. Also, the central government will send the names of the candidates for consultation and this takes a long time. And if the collegium resends the same name again, then the government has to give its consent to the names. Hence, difference in opinion arised between the collegium system and the government. And the 
therefore the system faced a lot of criticism due to lack of its transparency and accountability and this led the parliament to pass the 99th constitutional amendment act 2014 and the national judicial commission act njac to replace the collegium system for the appointment of appointment and transfer of judges Hence, in order to replace the collegian system, the parliament has passed two acts in the year 2014. That is the 99th Constitutional Amendment Act 2014 and the NJAC Act that is the National Judicial Appointments Commission Act with the constitution of the National Judicial Appointments Commission. But this attempt to replace the collegian system by a National Judicial Appointments Commission was struck down by the Supreme Court in the year 2015 and restoring the old collegian system. Coming to the next news article, an article about the Delhi High Court's ruling as to the obligation of the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India. From the examination point of view, we have to understand what is FSSAI, when was it established, what are its functions, responsibilities, etc. The Food Safety and Standards Authority of India is an autonomous body, that is an independent body, which was established in the year 2008 under the Food Safety and Standards Act 2006. As the authority was established under the Food Safety and Standards Act, it was considered a statutory body and an autonomous or independent body which is working under the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Now let's have a look into the powers and responsibilities of FSSAI. FSSAI is the prime authority which is responsible for promoting and protecting the public health through regulating and supervising food safety. Its various powers and responsibilities include making regulations to lay down food safety standards and prepares guidelines for the accreditation of laboratories for food testing. It again provides scientific advice and technical support to the government in relation to food safety standards. Then it collects data regarding food consumption, contamination, emerging risk, etc. And also promoting awareness about food safety and nutrition in India. And various science-based standards are laid down by FSSAI. And regulates the manufacture, storage, distribution, import and sale of food. And it promotes food safety and protection of public health. Many online initiatives has been launched by FSSAI to improve the food standards and safety in India. Some of these are the four scores, that is a food safety compliance system uh, which replaces the food licensing and registration system. Then RUCO, that is repurpose use cooking oil initiative. Infolnet, that is Indian Food Library Network. And also Eat Right India, Safe Food, Share Food, all these are the online initiatives of FSSAI. An important point to remember is FSSAI is the National Codex Conduct Point of India, that is NCCP. This NCCP was constituted by the FSSAI to keep in touch with the Codex Alimentarius Commission, which is an international food standards body. Now, what is Codex Alimentarius Commission? It is an international food standards body, we already said was established jointly by the FAO that is Food and Agriculture Organization and World Health Organization WHO in 1963 and its objective is for protecting consumers health and ensuring fair practices in food trade all over the world. India became the member of Codex Alimentarius Commission in 1964. Following the next one, no more charges under Section 66A of the Information Technology Act. Earlier, the Supreme Court has declared Section 66A as unconstitutional. 
we have to now discuss what is section 66a of the information technology act this section makes a punishable offense for any person who sends grossly offensive or threatening information using a communication device or a computer resource now let us see what the section says in the act section 66a says punishment for sending offensive messages through communication service etc as any person who sends by means of computer resource or a communication device any information that is grossly offensive or has a menacing character that is a threatening character or any information which he knows to be false but for the purpose of causing annoyance inconvenience danger insult injury etc by making use of the communication device or any electronic mail or electronic mail message for the purpose of causing the same they shall be punishable with imprisonment for a term which may extend to 3 years and with fine the terms used in this section was gravely misused and many people were caught for online speech various writ petitions were filed before the supreme court regarding this section one of the important case is raya singhal versus union of india in 2015 case taking into consideration all the petitions the supreme court in this case struck down the section as unconstitutional